epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Years ago, I discussed some of the most insane and unique flat rides, but there are so many more of these attractions out there, and in my listaholic top 10 style, I figured it was time to go further in depth with this subject. Recently I conducted a poll with some of the most unique flat rides, and literally thousands of viewers have cast their votes. Based on the results, we're going to look at just 10 of the most bizarre flat rides out there. Before we get started though, I just wanted to give a special shout out to YouTube user Funfair Worldwide, who also provided some of the footage for this video. This channel has a plethora of amazing and rare flat ride footage to check out, mainly from European Funfairs. Though this list will feature mostly permanent flat rides, there are so many more unique carnival rides. In fact, I'm already planning a sequel to this video specifically talking about carnival rides. So if you end up liking this video, feel free to subscribe and stay tuned. Number 10. The Rodeo. Built by various manufacturers. What happens when you cross a mechanical bull with a Tagata? You get this bizarre flat ride. This ride, commonly known as a rodeo, starts with passengers boarding a padded platform. Guests are then seated on padded cylinders in a straddling position above the platform. Each cylinder has a mock bull's head attached to it. Throughout the ride, fun seekers are given the full rodeo experience, as the cylinders bounce and rotate in an attempt to shake them off. What makes this ride even more challenging is the movement of the platform underneath. Unless you're a seasoned bull rider, you're pretty much bound to fall onto the platform, going from riding on the bull to rolling on the floor. Keeping your grip will take both strength and skill, and it's one of the only amusement rides where practice makes perfect. If you fall off once, feel free to hop back on and try again. If you can find this at a fair near you, go ahead and challenge yourself to see how long you could stay on for. Number 9. The Toppel Tower Made by German manufacturer Hus. This is pretty much an upside down frisbee ride. Instead of swinging under the axis, you'll be tilting above it. Passengers start by boarding a circular 40 person gondola towards the bottom of the tower. The gondola is then lifted towards the top of the tower before the ride cycle begins. With the help of elaborate designing and a counterweight underneath, passengers are able to seemingly defy gravity as they shift around like a joystick. The outward facing seats allow for some thrilling near miss elements. Guests will feel like the tower is about to snap in half at any minute, which adds another level of excitement to this odd experience. Unfortunately, despite its initial popularity, the ride model has received the unwanted reputation of being a maintenance nightmare. One incident at Tennessee's Dollywood saw the gondola getting stuck at the top after a faulty safety sensor engaged. Nobody was hurt, but some guests were stuck up there for around 6 hours. In addition, an installation at Canada's Marine Lane had to be closed after a crack formed in the ride structure. Nowadays, only two of these rides remain operational, one at Belgium's Belwarde and another at Vietnam's Dragon Park, though both are said to regularly face downtime as well. If you can make it to either of these parks, see if you can get on this rare attraction. Number 8. The Aviation Training Device Made by Chinese manufacturer Nanfang If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know what my opinion on the Zamperla Volare's trains is. This design lays passengers face down in a clunky, claustrophobic car. It is by far my least favorite train design, but can you imagine putting it on a flat ride? Taking inspiration from Moser Ride Circus Hopla Ride, Nanfang switched out the comfortable standard seats with Volari style gondolas that strap passengers in before practically boxing them up. The ride features a main arm that rotates on the center axis. At the end of the arm, 12 two-person gondolas freely rotate back and forth. All the while, passengers are asked to hang onto the bars in front of them. Though it's possible the ride experience is better than it looks, the fact that you're awkwardly stuck in a face down position with no free range of movement makes it look incredibly uncomfortable. If you've gotten a chance to ride one of these, let me know about it in the comments. Number 7. The Ferris Ring Made by various Chinese manufacturers This is an extremely popular ride in Asia, and it's sold by a wide variety of Chinese manufacturers. This unusual looking concept involves passengers boarding a small circular gondola that is powered through a loop. All the while, the gondola spins sideways. It's a very unique concept, and its compact design has made it a hit with the public. Nevertheless, this ride allegedly has major safety concerns. This is due to a reportedly high number of unlicensed manufacturers who put these on the market. Unlicensed manufacturers are not held to the same safety standards as licensed ones, and though China has been cracking down on these designers over the years, there are supposedly still many of them out there. 
For that reason, many ride enthusiasts advise against riding these if you've ever come across one. Number 6. The Sky Swat Made by American manufacturer SNS Power once upon a time, the fine folks at SNS Sansei created one of the most insane flat rides ever to hit the market. Then known as SNS Power, the company debuted its SkySwap model in 2003. This model featured a large arm that resembled a large double-ended fly swatter. In that regard, you could say it resembled a fly swatter that Darth Maul would use. Each end sat four rows of six guests, giving it a total capacity of 48 guests per cycle. Guests would board each end at the bottom. Like the topple tower, the arm was then lifted upwards before the ride began. The arm would then rotate repeatedly, with the guest seats remaining stationary. After a while, the arm would switch directions. The ride experience was said to be both intense and terrifying, as one side would plummet riders headfirst towards the ground. It made passengers feel like they were about to be swatted against the ground. It really was a remarkable and innovative ride concept, but again, just like the topple tower, its popularity was stunted by technical difficulties. Only two of these rides were ever built, Slammer at England's Thorpe Park and SWAT at Texas's Six Flags Astroworld. Both installations were plagued with issues from the start, with Slammer's opening being delayed. The model's excessive downtime supposedly made it less than appealing to potential buyers. For this reason, SNS would discontinue the model in 2010, leading to both installations closing down soon afterwards. If you got a chance to check out this ride model, consider it a very valuable credit. Number 5. The Madhouse, made by various manufacturers. Based on the 19th century haunted swing illusion, this ride concept has been modernized over the years. The most famous rendition of this ride would be built by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. First debuting in 1996, Vacoma's rendition seats guests inside a well-themed room, with two sections of seats facing each other on opposite sides. Passengers are then treated to a surreal ride experience where they appear to rotate around the room repeatedly. Unbeknownst to many though, the seats on this ride never actually flip upside down. They do swing a bit, but the real star of this ride's mechanics is the room itself. This room is actually the interior of a giant rotating device, while the seats are on a swinging pendulum. Despite only swinging a little bit, the movement of the seats combined with the rotation of the room adds up to an extremely disorienting experience. By the time the ride ends, there's a good chance your sense of direction will be totally mixed up. In addition to Vacoma, German manufacturer Mach Rides has their own rendition of this attraction called the Mystery Swing. Don't be surprised if you see more manufacturers pick up on this innovative concept. Number 4. Spin Dizzy, located at the Diggerland Chain of Amusement Parks. Who would have thought that excavation equipment would make for such a fun ride? Theme to construction work, the Diggerland chain of theme parks has been entertaining guests of all ages for over 20 years. With four parks located across England and one park in West Berlin, New Jersey, Diggerland offers a wide variety of attractions for young construction workers in the making. Guests can drive a full-size backhoe loader, bounce around on a telehandler, and be spun around on an actual hydraulic excavator. This vehicle was fully modified to be used as a thrill ride, with its digger bucket being fitted with seats and restraints. In what is possibly the best job in the world, a ride operator takes full control of the vehicle, spinning and lifting guests as they see fit. This incredibly unique ride can be found at every single Diggerland location, and along with its many other exciting attractions, the Diggerland parks are sure to entertain the whole family. Number 3. The Tumbler, made by American manufacturer Chance Rides. With a history spanning over 50 years, Chance Rides has created some of the most classic and memorable flat rides. These include the world-famous Zipper and the Skydiver, which we previously discussed in my Insane and Unique Carnival Rides video. This souped-up Ferris wheel features fully rotational gondolas that guests can control with a steering wheel. For the 1960s, this ride was way ahead of its time. But if you thought the Skydiver was crazy, wait till you get a load of the Tumbler. This hulking behemoth essentially takes two skydivers and connects them together on a giant rotating structure. When I first laid eyes on this attraction, my mind was totally blown. Just look at this thing. It looks more like something you'd use to train astronauts than an amusement ride. Parkgoers would gaze in astonishment as the many gondolas rotated 360 degrees around up in the air. It really was an amazing sight for its time. Unfortunately, only one of these rides was known to have been built and footage and video of it is extremely rare. Nevertheless, we are very lucky to have this monster documented. Number 2. The Alcatraz, made by Spanish manufacturer Lorente. 
Imagine taking a magic carpet ride, removing the restraints, and replacing the seats with shark cages. You'd get one of the strangest fair rides ever built. Named after the famous San Francisco prison, this ride known as an Alcatraz also goes by the name La Carcel, which is Spanish for the jail. For this ride, guests are locked into cages with no seats and no seatbelts. Five cages sit on a platform, which is connected to a rotating arm. As the platform rotates, guests are free to jump, dance, and get as much airtime as they want. As such, you're pretty much free to create your own ride experience. This attraction is extremely popular in Spain, and is pretty much a mainstay on the country's fair circuit. Though considering its high-risk appearance, it's unlikely we'll be seeing any pop up in the US. Still though, you've got to admit that this ride looks like a lot of fun. Number 1. Tweety's Escape, located at California Six Flags Magic Mountain. While it's certainly not as thrilling as the other rides on this list, its truly bizarre appearance makes it well worthy of the number one spot. Believe it or not, this was one of Magic Mountain's opening day attractions, originally known as Lunar Lander. Around the 1980s, the gondolas were swapped out with large bird cages, and the ride was rethemed to the Looney Tunes character Tweety Bird. On this ride, parents literally have their children locked up and swung around in large bird cages. There are no seats or restraints inside the cages, so kids either have to stand up during the duration of the ride or sit down on the metal floor. At first, this ride doesn't seem fun at all, even for a kid's ride. It looks absolutely tedious, and what kid is going to want to stand up in a cage and be swung around after a long day of walking around the park? Surprisingly enough though, this ride is actually a guest favorite. So much so that when the park was refurbished in the late 90s, the decision was made to keep this ride operating due to its popularity. And let's be honest, the design of this ride is so strange, it's undoubtedly memorable. Nobody knows for sure who manufactured it. Some say it was Swiss manufacturer Intamin, while others say it was made in-house by the park itself. Either way, this ride is a true oddity that's well worth talking about. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, I've put a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.